Hi everyone, we're going to go ahead and pick up exactly where we left off um, with the Inca. So this is going to be flip video 1.5, who were the Inca part 2. So we're going to pick up with the interactions between uh, the Inca and their environment. And this is going to be somewhat redundant, somewhat repetitive, because some of the, um, the key adaptations we were discussed under the political systems. So let's expand it just a little bit. Um, from an environmental perspective, this is primarily an agricultural society, meaning a farming society. Um, the vast majority of the people within the society were farmers, just like the Aztecs and Maya. The most common crop is actually potatoes, which is um, interesting because, or and the reason for that uh, was because it could survive at the frost of the high altitude. So if this is in the, the Andes Mountains, then you're going to need vegetation that can survive at a high altitude. So potatoes are really um, were sort of domesticated uh, in a large scale in South America, and the Inca were one of the early civilizations to practice that type of farming. Something that's really interesting about the Inca that the U.S. government itself actually adopted. Um, surplus crops, surplus is a word that means extra, more than you need. So that's you can put that term on the left if you are unclear on what that meant. Storehouse, uh, surplus crops were actually stored in government storehouses. And those storehouses were full of crops and that, that would then be distributed to those in need. Be it the elderly, be it the poor, if there's sort of, sort of bad season, be it the warriors if they're actually at war. Um, but the storehouse is also that, that concept of maintaining a supply, an emergency supply for times of need. We actually, the U.S. actually looked back at that practice in, in the early 1900s, and the sec early Secretary of Agriculture noticed that the, uh, that the or took note of that practice, and then began the same process in the U.S. to make sure we saved seeds of different types of crops, just in case there's some sort of massive famine or massive, um, you know, environmental disaster that would harm our supply. So a cool indication of some of the ways in which the Inca provided for their society effectively and how they adapted to the environment. Uh, much like the Chinese, which we will cover in the coming unit, um, the, the Inca actually terraced their mountainous terrain. So in that problem-solving activity, some of us noted that you could um, use the, you could start trading in order to, to better supply your people with food. But in reality, the best way, to, the most effective way to do that would be just to adapt to the environment you're physically in. And the Inca did so by creating what you see here that are known as terraced as, uh, as terraces, and this is terraced farming. Essentially, the Inca would dig into the side of the mountain, as you see, to create this flatland. And that not only not only would that allow them to farm because with the flattened land, but it would also prevent flooding in the valleys and erosion on the mountainside. I want you to envision that if this is let's expand this. This is the on a mountain, and mo many of the people live either on the side of the mountain or within the valleys of the mountain here. That the rainfall could very easily flood or just um, destroy really anything in the valley. The terraced farmland ensured that the in the terraces themselves ensured that the water would not necessarily rush down. It would collect and pool, and help feed the and and uh, supply the crops. So. Another effective adaptation to the environment, another way that the Inca were able to modify the environment to best suit the needs of their people. Another thing they were known for, I mentioned it with the soldiers, that they were fine masons, so they would actually erect these new monuments and places where the Inca would go and conquer. They were uh, These fine masons were, that was exemplified, that how, just how skilled they were at masonry. They, the, Machu, the entire structure of Machu Picchu, which is that city in the sky that we looked at before, um, the, the entire thing was built with stones that were not uh, held together with cement. There was no mortar, there was no cement, no adhesive actually uh, keeping these bricks together, this stone together. It's just simply extraordinary masonry, extraordinarily fine skill. You can think about this if you've ever had the process of trying to get a book out from a shelf where the books are so tightly compact, you can't get it in, you can't get it out, it's just budged right in there. Right, that's the, imagine that, but for a physical structure that's lasted for fi over 500 years. That's, that's pretty remarkable. Another example of the right, this is actually terrace farming in um, China. This is actually just another example of this, the modification, which we'll come back to. Um, so economically, let's, oh wait, let's get some, wait, that's not right. It's culture. We're going to come back to that. There we go. Let's do, uh, that one's out of order. Um, another adaptation, the, the Inca were in mountains, and the mountains would prevent tra effective transportation. So not only did they create the road system, which I already mentioned, and you can include that in your notes under environment as well, the Inca also created early examples of suspension bridges across the rivers using braided cables. You know suspension bridges, and the modern example is there on the left, but these suspension bridges if, um, were yet another example of the improved transportation, the ability to govern in an effective way, in order to communicate in an effective way, in order to provide for the people in effective ways, and simply how they effectively modify the environment to suit their needs. 
Culturally, um, one of the things that the, that's interesting or a little bit unique about the Inca is that the Inca placed great emphasis upon their ancestors and respecting the dead. Well, something we'll come back to a little to an extent when we study um, China and in, in terms of the respecting the ancestors. But the China, the Inca actually revered their ancestors so much they actually practiced mummification, which is another. It's, it's interesting because this is not the the civilization existed much later than the Egyptians, but did not have any contact with the Egyptians. So just kind of an interesting, uni, somewhat of a universal uh, practice here in these early civilizations. Um, so that's that. So the Inca practiced mummification of the dead. They placed great emphasis upon the significance of their ancestors, often prayed to their ancestors, um, and would take the mummif even taking the mummified bodies of their ancestors into war with them um, as a sort of sign of luck and, and blessings from their ancestors. Uh, much like the Aztecs and the Maya, the Inca had tremendous quantities of gold in their empire. So uh, one of the things that they would, that this gold would be used for would be in architectural purposes for building. They were also very skilled artisans. All three empires had tremendous quantities of gold. And sadly, that's going to be one of the things that the conquering, uh, one of the reasons why they were conquered was because the Europeans were searching for that gold. You can see in some of their, their artwork here, um, the, pre and the, the presence of the use of that gold. Uh, much, again, also like the Aztecs and Maya, the Inca were known as expert weavers. They often used fur from the alpaca. If you know, the alpaca is an animal um, that it li usually lives in more mountainous regions. Um, and they would use the alpaca fur for that, for that weaving. Um, they did not have a writing system. There was no writing system. So this is very unique and different from the uh, Aztecs and the Maya. But they did have a record-keeping system, and that was maintained through what's known as the kipu. And the kipu was this complex knotted string that was used to record numerical data. So the, the kipu actually, it would be, I think I've got a picture of it here somewhere. Oh, I'll come back to it. The, the idea of the kipu is that there would be knots. And actually, I am going to flip this because I know I do have a picture of this. Come on now. The kipu, where is this? Goodness gracious. There we go. Um, the kipu itself, oh man, I just let you up for, sorry guys, we'll, we'll do that in class. Um, the kipu actually allowed us, allowed the Inca to um, to keep track of numerical data. And I'm going to pause there for just a second to get that picture. Okay, we're back. So here's what the kipu would be and um, the way it was used. Essentially, the knots represented data. So where the knots were placed along the kipu, you can see here, we represented a place value, much like you probably did this for building blocks in elementary school. This is the tens block, this is the hundreds block. Similarly, this would, this would be used to, to mark quantitative data. So the lack of a writing system did not prevent the Inca from having some sort of uh, unified system to track data, taxes, tribute, people even. There was even early examples of a census from the Inca people. Um, I, oh, this is a lot of order too. Jeez Louise. Um, so we already mentioned this before, but the Machu Picchu is just one of the greatest. Their that was sort of their peak architectural achievement. Um, it was only theorized to be an imperial retreat. That means that it was believed. It, we it's unclear exactly what the role of Machu Picchu was, but it was believed to be a royal. That's what the word imperial means. Um, retreat into the sacred landscape of the Andes Mountains. So it's supposed to be sort of basically like a vacation place for the king um, within this very sacred, very revered landscape of the Andes Mountains. No need to recopy that third point again. But you can see here, this is just an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Just beautiful in the in the structure of the city, the placement of the top of the mountains. I mentioned it to some of you in class that believed to be the stones. Uh, Archaeologists have believed that, have found that many of the stones used in the construction of Machu Picchu here came from hundreds and hundreds of miles away, which is just fun, just incredibly impressive for such an early group of people um, to be organized, to be efficient, and to construct these these massive structures that have lasted for so long. Um, okay, the do, 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 do. culturally here we go. Uh, another thing that they the the Inca um, that's significant to them was they too were polytheistic, so they also had some sort of conception of an afterlife. So Many uh, Christians refer to that as heaven. Muslims would say paradise. The the Inca too had some sort of uh, conception of the afterlife. When th there's been evidence uh, found that they they had those um, sort of um, just those beliefs about what's what's coming next. 
their their sun god was known as the Inti, that's the most uh, significant, and the Sapa Inca, which I mentioned was the term for the king, was actually, that word itself means the son of the sun, so a clear indication of the relationship between the power of the sun and the power of the king. Um, that was the, the lead god here. Ah, that is, geez, always, that's what I was looking for, is that they're right there, you can see the Kipu is the system of organized knots. No need to recopy that. And let's go back to the one that was out of order. Okay, economically. Economically, the uh, the Inca were able to, well, to cost several things. This is also an adaptation to the environment, so you can, you can keep these in either one of those areas there. Um, the, the Inca created a large-scale agriculture irrigation system, just like the Aztecs, just like the Maya. Irrigation systems are, water, are systems of supplying water to uh, crops from long distances, so somewhere that doesn't necessarily have water. Uh, irrigation systems allow people to farm in that region, either by transporting the water from different dis distances, by digging irrigation canals, many different ways this can happen. The Inca effectively modified their environment in order to provide that agricultural base for their society. I already mentioned that the major crops were the potatoes and maize. Um, the road system also, now we're really speaking economically, really facilitated that long distance trade. Llamas and alpaca, the two animals that were used um, to help to negotiate that trading along the road system. But the trading was obviously a very key component of a society who had those limited resources. All right, let's jump back to the rest of economics. Do, 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 do. Oh, boy, too far. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Urgh. Last thing I want you to put into culture. You can put an arrow down in your notes. Sorry, guys. Um, the, the, um, we looked at this in class, but it's a very important thing to remember. That the Inca had an incredibly diverse society. Absolutely incredible diversity. 15, approximately some in the order of 10 to 15 million people who spoke 20 different languages. You can see from the color coding on the map on the right the different time periods in which these people were conquered. They did have the common language of the Quechua, but the Quechua didn't necessarily become universally adopted. So ultimately, this cultural diversity and among many of the, the militaristic tactics of the Inca leader who could deploy that army anywhere in three to five days, um, that, that really led to, to fragmentation within the empire and ultimately the, the uh, problems of unity that the Inca faced and ultimately then helped aid in their, in their fall against the Spaniards. So, very, very, very diverse society. Okay, my apologies. Back here to the economics. They did not have a specified currency, much like um, the Mayan Aztecs that we already spoke about. The currency really doesn't come into play until we get into China. We learn about the Han Dynasty with paper money. Uh, but the taxes were paid in Nita, which we already mentioned, that mandated work for the government. So there still was that taxation system. Okay, there it is. There's the analysis questions. So please pause where you are here. Um, and let me make one little quick change. Okay, there you go. So those are the three question, three analysis questions. Please pause here. Be sure that the analysis questions are labeled flip video 1.5 and completed on a separate sheet of paper. Have a good day.